Well, hello everyone. Uh, Evan Day here again, and I have another local author, Brooke Johnson. Uh, she lives in Rogers here, has written several books uh, like uh, The Brass Giant and Guild Conspiracy that we have here at the library as well. And she's here just to talk about um, writing, publishing, and uh, some of her favorite books. So first off, uh, thanks so much for coming here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, I guess my first question would be, um, uh, why do you write about what you write about? Uh, what, you know, and uh, uh, what made you want to be a writer, is what you say? Uh, well, you can start there, because I feel like it really kind of defines why I write what I write. But um, I always love to tell stories. It was my favorite part of school was, you know, write about your summer vacation, what you did this summer, or write about what you did this weekend. I always loved doing that. And I was a chronic liar <laughs> as a kid. So um, I was always making up stories and stuff like that. And then um, I read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for the first time. And it was like the first time that I really, it really clicked for me that people wrote books. And it wasn't just something that magically appeared at school. And, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, but, um, so I, I read that and, and at the end of it, I saw, you know, oh, this JK Rowling wrote this and, you know, this is where she lives with her family and all. I was like, oh, a person wrote this. I could do that. I could write books. <laughs> and so I did. And, um, now I write primarily fantasy and, um, I dabble in science fiction a little bit and, that's really why is I, I love magic. I love impossible things and things that we just don't have in the real world. And it's fun. Now, I'm sure making something that's not in the real world is fun, but you still have to do like research and yes. uh, look up stuff for stuff. But what kind of stuff, what kind of research would you have to do? Um, I do a lot of research. So for my published books that I have out are steampunk, which is like Victorian age science fiction. So I had to do a lot of research just on the Victorian age, um, the way people lived, the way people dressed, the way politics worked and society worked and all of that kind of stuff just to get the setting. And then from, from that, I then had to do the steampunk side and had to study how do machines work? <laughs> Um, I had uh, I had some technical volumes that I got from my dad that were like very um, you know how certain things work in layman's terms so that I could understand them and I studied those and bookmarked those and and referenced them while I was writing and that was a really big help with that with those books and um, but some of the other stuff I write uh, I just finished a fantasy novel uh, that takes place in 13th century Scotland. So that also required historical research, looking into how they lived and what things were called and all of that fun stuff. <laughs> well, I can imagine that it must be difficult sometimes to have a topic or something that you want to write about that you're really interested in, but you realize you have to do a lot of research on stuff that you might not be interested in to get mm -hmm. the picture of that. So that must be interesting. Um, so when you're trying to write, what inspires you? What makes you um, get the, the writing habit going? Uh, well, for me now, it's kind of just, it's what I do. <laughs> so it's really just a, okay, it's time to write. So I sit down and I do it. Um, but a lot of that comes from, I'm a really thorough planner. Um, so I do a lot of planning ahead of time, outlining, plotting, that sort of thing. So when I do sit down to write, I already know what, what I need to write next. Um, but as for like getting in the mood for it, usually I have a cup of tea and I listen to game and movie soundtracks um, while I'm writing. Um, it helps keep me focused. What are, your, what are some game and movie soundtracks that you might listen to? Oh, I have so many. <laughs> um, it really depends. I actually have different playlists depending on what I'm writing. So for instance, the fantasy novel I just finished, I have a bunch of like big sweeping medieval orchestra type scores. Um, I've got lots of Scottish music. 
So I've got uh, like Celtic, um, I can't remember, I think it's the Chieftains, I think is the, is the uh, group that they've got a bunch of like Celtic Irish music that I listen to. Um, I listen to the Outlander soundtracks. We're really good for that one because it's all bagpipes and, and you know, that really, it just evokes a sense of Scotland, I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah. Um, so once you get your book together, what does it take to get published? Is it difficult? Uh, yeah. So my uh, first books were published in a really weird way. Um, I don't recommend trying to get published the way I did. Because uh, <laughs> normally what you do is um, if you're going for traditional publishing and you want to get with a publisher who usually puts their books in like Barnes and Noble or bookstores or ones that the library can order, that sort of thing. Um, you want to go through a literary agent first and the literary agent will then sell your book to a publisher. Um, I didn't do that. <laughs> I, uh, I did, um, I originally self-published and uh, uh, after a few years, uh, my books were doing okay. Like I, I, they were fine. I was selling a little bit, I, you know, and uh, this publisher, Harper Voyager, opened up a, a open call for submissions and they were accepting previously self-published novels. And I was like, well, I've got nothing to lose, so I'll give it a shot. And uh, over 4,500 people entered. <laughs> and when I didn't hear back, by their deadline, I was like, oh, well, they passed on it, whatever. And then like a year and a half later, I got an email from an editor saying, hey, we want to publish your books. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so it was just, it was kind of weird. But um, that, that opportunity does not happen very often. Wow. So say you are a beginning writer. What are some basic tips that you would uh, give a beginning writer? So uh, for people just starting out, um, I think one of the things that that I didn't do was originally I was really focused on like the technical aspects of writing as I wanted to make sure like my sentences were all perfect and my paragraphs were all perfect and everything like that was perfect when I should have started from storytelling. And I think that the important thing to focus on is telling a good story first and connecting to the characters that you have in this story and worry about making it perfect later. Um, for a long time, I spent a lot of time like trying to be perfect the first go. Like my first draft, I was like, this has to be technically perfect. I can't mess up. I don't know why I didn't think I could edit it later. Um, but I, I understand that now. And now I write as quickly as I possibly can um, to get the story out and get my feelings and the characters journeys out. And then I worry about making it perfect later. And I think that's a really important thing is you can always edit. You can't edit a blank page. So when you're not writing, uh, what do you like to do? Uh, I play lots of video games. <laughs> um, lately, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing yeah. and uh, Elder Scrolls Online, which are two very different games. Yes. But that's what I've been doing a lot lately. Um, I read a lot and um, I play uh, Dungeons and Dragons when there's not a pandemic going on and I can have friends over. <laughs> exactly. Do um, you find that some of that helps you when you're writing? I think so. Uh, it's funny because like I'm in the process of working on a new thing, uh, an epic fantasy, and I can very easily describe it using video games as comparative titles so it's like if you took the legend of zelda and mixed it with elder scrolls and world of warcraft and then throw a little bit avatar the last airbender in there and that's that's what i'm working on and um i think that games kind of help with i think a lot of like visual inspiration i get a lot of visual inspiration from games because especially in those open world type where you can explore lots of different places and things that places you couldn't go in real life, you know, and I feel like that inspires me in a lot of ways. And then with D and D specifically, um, I also DM, I'm also a dungeon master and I, I run games a lot. And that's also a type of storytelling. It's completely different kind of storytelling because your players are both 
they're kind of like your audience and your main characters and you have to kind of figure out how to create an engaging experience that not only do they enjoy playing but they enjoy experiencing and i feel like it it um it helps you look at things in a little bit of a different way whenever you approach it from just a writing perspective yeah um so how much reader feedback do you look back whether it's reviews online people just critiquing your work how much uh, of that do you um <laughs> The general advice is to don't read any of it. Uh, I read all of it. <laughs> uh, every time I see a new review or um, someone will tag my book or me on like Twitter or something like that, I'll read it. Uh, I've gotten to a point where bad reviews don't bother me so much. Um, I understand reading is subjective. Not everyone is going to love what I write and that's fine. Um, there are some bad reviews I've read and I've laughed at. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, you really missed the point here. <laughs> but um, I do read it all. It's, I like to know what people are thinking. I like, especially in something that is an ongoing series, like my steampunk book, I, I still have two more books left in that series that I want to write and publish. Um, and so like seeing some of the feedback from the other earlier stories, I'm like, okay, I can kind of see something that I didn't think about and now I can incorporate that into my next book and so that's how I do it a lot of people don't <laughs> but. Well, <it's> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's, what's a book I think you talked about Harry Potter and some of the other books what's a book that meant a lot to you growing up I mean well Harry Potter was a big one um, because it was really the first thing that got me into reading fantasy and science fiction. Um, prior to that, I think the closest I got to it was reading Goosebumps, and I read all of the Goosebumps books. <laughs> I love those. And um, But other than that, it's hard to say. I, I think there was one book, uh, there, uh, The Green Rider by Kristen Britton, was one of the first like adult fantasy books I read and it it kind of it opened a door to me to more books in that way. Oh that's great but um you know it's summer reading time we're trying to give people ideas for what they could read this summer uh, what's a book or two that you've been reading that you would recommend for somebody to read this summer? So I've been reading a lot of nonfiction uh, lately, um, especially working on a new writing project. I often try to read books about writing. Uh, one of the ones that I'm reading right now, I've got oh, yeah. Story Genius by Lisa Cron. It is a fantastic book on how to write a story um, from an emotional core and using like characters perspectives to like color how you're writing the story which I think is really cool and that's for the writer people if they want to <laughs> dig into something educational um, but for fiction I just started reading uh, this anthology okay, yeah. The Phoenix First Must Burn uh, edited by Patrice Caldwell I follow her on Twitter and um, so whenever this book came out I knew that I really wanted it and um, the stories in it are just really, really great because it's just, they're just beautiful in, in like their own way. And I really like anthologies. Um, it's a great way to find new authors to fall in love with um, because I often, I'm one of those people that I'm like, oh, I really like this author and I'm going to buy everything that they've ever written and ever will write. And it's hard for me to break out of that and find new authors. So I often get a lot of anthologies um, because it helps me. It's kind of like a sampler pack of new authors to read. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for coming here and talking to us. Yeah. Um, we'll leave more, some more information uh, from online. You will be able to click in the description to find more books with Rick Johnson. Again, thank you so much for coming. And uh, we'll see you around. All right, see you.